I'm Russell Edwards. Um, I'm here today at the site of Leavesden Asylum with Martin. And today we're going to have a tour round what's left of old Leavesden Asylum. So Martin, can you tell us where we are precisely, please? Where we are right now, Russell, is we're in front of what was the old administration building for the Leavesden Asylum. It was originally called Leavesden Asylum for Idiots and Imbeciles. It was built uh, based on the Metropolitan Asylum Board, which was formed in 1868. And it was really at that time created for the care and, and taking, uh, taking off the streets of um, the people that were homeless and had learning disabilities or mental health issues in London, the north part of London. This was, Leafston Hospital was one of uh, six facilities that were built um, by the Metropolitan Asylum Board. And people used to say, oh, calling it an asylum, lunatic asylum, that's horrible. But back in the days in 1868, Metropolitan Asylum Board was actually living by their name because the true definition of asylum is a safe place of refuge. And that's what they were building for these people in the streets of London. They were actually building a safe place of refuge for them. So where we are is at Leafston Asylum, as it was originally called Leafston Asylum for Idiots and Imbeciles. It was completed in 1870. What we see behind us now is the administration building. So that would have been three floors there. First floor would have been just storage and everything because they didn't have underground basements to store food and dry goods. Um, so they would have stored them there. The first floor would have been your um, your administration wing, so the head uh, surgeon would have been there, the head clerks, uh, you know, all the head nurses. If you were single and you worked on site here, you had a flat up above on the third floor, so that's where you had all the matrons and any single uh, individuals that were working here, upper management. Um, when it opened in October 1st of 1870, this facility held 1,968 patients. Uh, it had a staff of about 240, uh, so there was a little over 2,300 people living in this area. The whole site, uh, the whole site covered 84 acres. It was north of Watford, about three miles. Um, it was built on what at that time was Asylum Road because it was the only road that came from Watford all the way up to the asylum. So they called it Asylum Road right up until 1947, 1949, and then it's reintroduced as College Road um, because at that time there were three nursing colleges and two industrial colleges here. So they thought, well, rather than Asylum Road, we're going to call it College Road. And so when the NHS was formed in 1949 and took over the facility, then they decided to call it College Road. So that's how that all got started. We also have here some of the other uh, buildings that are on site, the old recreation hall, um, which is uh, right next to the administration wing. That was built in 1891 for the purpose of providing recreation as a therapy method for the patients that were um, uh, committed here. Uh, so they started doing recreation. They actually allocated 50 pounds a year uh, for the purchase of cards and board games. So they had something to do. It was actually considered quite the social event. They had staff bands, they had staff pantos, they had uh, um, uh, inmate uh, bands that would play here. And it was considered quite the thing to come out to the recreation hall at the Old Leafson Hospital for an evening of entertainment or to see a panto or something. Um, so yeah, it was quite the thing. We have uh, some records of a steam train that used to run through here. So people would come by horse and cart, steam train, come up here, see a show. They, they were, uh, uh, they were uh, uh, having cinemas here uh, until 1912 when the, uh, uh, the projector burned down, uh, caught fire, and they decided this wasn't a good idea. Um, so some of the other local historic things that happened in this building in 1950, they had the very first performance of the Abbots Langley Gilbert and Sullivan Society. Um, so they performed here at the Recreation Hall at Leafson Hospital for many years until they started uh, performing at Henderson Hall in town. Um, so there was quite a, a lot of things. They had uh, services for the dead uh, provided in the hall. Uh, they actually had patients uh, that were, were had services there, uh, staff that had services there. They would have wedding receptions there. We have one old photograph from 1937. It was an absolute ornate, very detailed, very, very... Uh, rich wood dance floor. I mean, it was quite the place, crystal chandeliers and everything. So even though it was a facility, for, you know, medical facility, they still they still had, you know, quite, quite the show place there in the recreation hall. So yeah. one of the other facilities that we have just behind us here is the old chapel that was built originally 1868 to 1870. Um, it's now owned by a company called Demand, which is designed and manufactured for the disabled. So in theory, we still have a medical facility on this site 147 years after it was originally built in 1870. Yeah. So it's quite historic, so. Yeah, thank you very much. And so uh, with Demand the Chapel, yep. the site uh, that we're looking at really of interest to me because this is where the might proved to be the murderer known as Jack yep. the Ripper. 
was incarcerated in 1894. Yep. Um, is there much that you know about that story? Well, I know as, I've known as much as um, not as obviously as much as the person who wrote the book. <laughs> um, but no, we do know that he that Aaron Kosminski was the individual. He was known to the Metropolitan Police at the time of the murders. Um, he was committed to. Um, um, Mile, mile End uh, facility by his brother Wolfgang at the time. Uh, he stayed there. He was then recommitted. He went to Colony Hatch. He was committed to Colony Hatch. So he was transferred to, to Leavesden in 1894. He stayed here. He worked uh, actually earning up to 26 shillings a week uh, as a patient here at the hospital. We do have records uh, in the 1901 census of Aaron Kosminski being here at the hospital. And we do have a death uh, certificate that says he died at the hospital March 25th, 1919. Um, for a long time, we used to be able to uh, speculate that he may actually be buried in the cemetery here. We have one of three cemeteries. Uh, we've just recently discovered that one of the cemeteries is actually used as a mass grave, uh, which was another mystery of, of Leafston Hospital that we've recently solved. Um, so Aaron Kosminski was here. Uh, he did pass away in 1919. Uh, we know the area of the graveyard that he would have been in if he, if he passed away uh, in that time. But we also have a record where the body was actually transferred to his brother, and we believe he's now buried in West Ham Cemetery. But if you're a good, a good uh, uh, conspiracy theorist, uh, you'll notice that on the records there, you can't read uh, the name on the, uh, the tombstone in West Ham Cemetery, East Ham Cemetery, East Ham. East Ham Cemetery. So you can't read the actual name on there, and they actually spe speculate that it's been spelt incorrectly. So the speculation is that it's actually his cousin that's buried here, and the real Aaron Kosminski, who is most likely Jack the Ripper, uh, still may be buried in our cemetery. At least that's the story we like to tell everybody locally. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're correct. It's, it, um, he was taken by Wolf. Um, it was uh, the cemetery was in East Ham Cemetery. That's yep. absolutely correct. Yep. Um, and of course, it was in 19, when, 1919 when he passed away. Yep. Now, the fascinating uh, story is that I've only just recently found out, actually speaking to yep. you, Martin, that this is still here. Yes. So could you just kindly tell us, uh, we've got a building to the far, uh, just, just sort of tucked away in the, uh, for the camera's purposes, far left. That's really where the male, because could you tell us a little bit about oh, right. where the males were brought and where the right. females were brought? We, um, it might be better if we just maybe take a short walk over there. Yeah, uh, And then we can we can just pick up over there and you'll get an idea of where all the buildings were and where most likely Aaron Kosminski was actually housed as a patient here. Thank you very much.